Okay, so in this video I want to sort of show you how easy it is to sort of make a, a sine wave and just put it in a wave file and just play it as a tone. So the program is only so so small. I mean, uh, if you just go go through it line by line and all this, just the x is just generating a set of uh, x values and this y is generating a sinusoidal uh, wave function out of it and 100 is the amplitude of it. And that's about it. Now, now that you have a sine wave, we just open it up, open a wave file in the right binary mode, not in the right mode, but right binary mode. And uh, what you do is you just print whatever the, whatever is there in the sine array into the wave file. And we use uh, a module known as struct. And what struct does is it takes this input value that you give uh, and converts it into binary and then writes it into the wave file so that's a very important module and uh, here we have specified the 44100 is the sampling rate and uh, uh, and we are using numpy to generate the sine wave so that's about it that's that's all the code that you need i was actually kind of surprised that it is that, 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 that this thing works in the first place so um let's let's uh, i've already sort of stored this in test.web a wave file and uh, now there is there is a sort of a problem I need to address now like if you, if you go and press this try to ex try to run it in some typical audio software it's gonna say could not determine type of stream the, and the reason to that because we have not specified the channels we have not specified the sample rate bit rate uh, you know we have not specified anything about the audio file in the uh, when you when we are writing the or when you have when you have written the audio file so that's why any standard software is going to just go wait what did you just what are you telling me to read so it's not going to recognize it but that is the way out of it you see um, like if you go to audacity and um, if you go to audacity and that's not, audacity has this uh, audacity has this amazing feature of saying raw data import and what it does is basically it just reads the wave file as it is without expecting any sort of inputs in the file so if you sort of give open and now we can specify the encoding and channels and uh, sample rate on your own so now what we have done is this as a assigned 8-bit PCM and um, sampling rate and uh, channels and so on so if you sort of import it now it will import the file as it is now if you sort of zoom in you can sort of see it's a sine wave it's a, it's a, it's a legitimate sine wave and uh, and if you sort of zoom in closer you can sort of see the data points that uh, that it has plotted onto this wave file as actually like i said i was really surprised that it generated a sine wave i was expecting it to sort of um, like do not read at all in the first place but uh it works so now how do i know it's 440 hertz um i have here let me just uh, yes i had to pause there a bit because my fft program just stopped funk working all of a sudden for no reason and uh, let, let's just see let's I'll open an FFT app to sort of see what is the frequency that is playing. So let's play the tone, and you can see on the left that is the FFT. Perfect, 440 hertz. Awesome. So and the best part is that's all the code that you need. I mean, this all this is redundant, and you can possibly like write it in one line such a simple simple logic does some serious business in the next video i'll sort of i'll try to get in all the try to put in all the necessary details of um, kodak and sampling rate or and things like that so that any standard uh, audio software would be able to recognize it and also um, now that the sine wave is possible it only tells you that implies that uh, any sort of data that you want you can sort of pack it into a wave file and sort of play it so 
that's some cool interesting domain to sort of explore steganography if you like okay that's about it bye